Welcome to this detailed video on Spawn's External Works and Landscaping Price Book 2018. Please watch the introduction video first. In this video we will review part 3, Approximate Estimating Rates, page 33, which is the PDF page 72 of 673. You'll note that there are a number of preamble pages and ancillary tables of contents etc. So for the purposes of these videos, I refer to the PDF page 72 in this instance. Thank you. You will note the reference to prices excluding prelims. This is an example of an exclusion which should be clearly stated and priced separately. For more on prelims, please read the pre preliminary chapter in this. Now is a good time to refer to the index section, which is in alphabetical order at the end of the book. PDF page 658. Here you will find page numbers for handy reference. For example, preliminaries are on page 41. Back to page 33, PDF page 72 for part 3, approximate estimating rates. These rates are useful when producing a rough order of magnitude cost estimate, sometimes referred to as a budget cost plan or known in the industry as a back of the envelope calculation. They are considered to be accurate to plus or minus 20%. By now you should be familiar with the concept of overheads, which were introduced in the chapter on labor rates. This chapter refers to labor costs, including overhead, and has a separate markup percentage adjustment for profit levels. For the UK market in 2018, profit levels in this sector have been recorded as approximately 10 to 15 percent. The figure of 15 percent is used in the example on this page. This will allow quantity surveyors, contractors and estimators to adjust rates depending on their profit expectations. For the remainder of part three, approximate estimating rates, the value in the range column will include overheads and profit. first section we will examine on page 35, PDF page 74, is titled Housing and House Builder. We can use this model to estimate developments for housing, apartments, nursing homes, etc. Please read the explanatory note accompanying this section. So the main benefit of approximate rates is we can group items together which would ordinarily be measured separately, such as excavation of topsoil, disposal, importing topsoil, planting, watering, etc. These composite rates will save the estimator or QS a lot of time. When producing an estimate from approximate quantities, it's a good idea to review the chapter in its entirety. This chapter runs from page 35 to page 123. By quickly reviewing the chapter, you see which approximate rates are closest to what you are estimating. Don't get too bogged down here. Find what suits best and make or state your assumptions. By making and stating assumptions, you're letting the reader of the estimate know that you have narrowed your focus. If they disagree with your assumptions, they can let you know or adjust it themselves accordingly. Without knowledge of your assumptions, your estimate may be disregarded as being too high or too low and could eliminate you from a tender competition or a fee proposal. Making and stating assumptions also protects you and your company's reputation and provides a useful record for you when reviewing the estimate in the future. Remember, the timeline between producing this budget estimate and the final account could be measured in years and having records of assumptions stated can be very useful. An example of an assumption can be found on page 48 under the Clearing Surfaces Demolish Existing Surfaces heading. Imagine you've been asked to put together an estimate for site clearance for a nursing home. There is a concrete slab on site and you're not sure if it's reinforced with steel or not. If you choose to assume it is plain concrete slab, the estimated rate will be 1450 per meter squared. But if you choose to assume it is reinforced concrete slab that is reinforced with steel, the rate would be 20 per meter squared or almost 40% more expensive. 
This could have implications for your tender or cost estimate. Being decisive, making an assumption and stating that in that section of the estimate, that assumption can protect you in the future. I find it's useful to state the assumptions in an additional comment column as you are progressing and to summarize them at the bottom of the document. You can then copy and paste that summary of exclusions or assumptions into a cover letter which highlights the exclusions and assumptions you have made. A note on the unit column. Pay particular attention to this column and note that sometimes the unit used for composite rates or composite items may vary from your local method of measurement. State clearly if you're using a M lineal meters or M squared meters squared and choose the appropriate rate. You'll note that some of the descriptions include PC or prime cost sums for materials. For example, bricks vary PC sums from 400 to 800 pounds per thousand bricks. This is to allow for different levels of finishes and can also be used to allow the client to make savings or value engineer details down the road. When using these PC sums, you should always state the value per unit and the total value of PC sums included. So that concludes our introduction to part three, approximate estimating rates. Stay tuned for the next installation in the series, introduction to part four, prices for measured works.